welcome uh, to a very special cult one-shot, Lust from Beyond, based on the video game of the same name, which is this erotic, sensual, horrific journey uh, into the cult of lust and nightmares. Uh, so we have a very special, special one-shot today where uh, it's just going to be a lot of interesting and new things. Uh, but... None of this would be possible without these amazing people, and we're gonna give them an opportunity to introduce themselves, tell us what they're doing, where they can, where you guys can uh, chat and follow up with these amazing people, uh, because tonight you're in for a real treat, just because they are here in in your presence. Uh, so we will start off uh, to your left, uh, which is Beholder to No One, playing Azella Rose. What you got? Hi, um, I'm Nikki, and I am the creator of Beholder to No One, a TTRPG podcast, which has three different shows on it. Um, in the future, we are also having Dice Before Dawn, which is a Vampire the Masquerade podcast, and Sound Control RPG, which is a sci-fi podcast. I'm also on Awfully Queer Heroes and 2000 Tales, so I do a lot. And you can find me mostly at Beholder to No One on Twitter, and that's where you'll hear Emmy shout out, but all of it. <laughs> excellent, excellent. All right, uh, continuing along counterclockwise, uh, let's give it up for. Oh, no, not Rendis. Go back, Rendis. Counterclockwise, counterclockwise. Counterclockwise. Uh, <laughs> back, Rendis. Uh, we will swing it on over to Chaos. Hello, I'm Elliot, otherwise known as Chaos Thumb. I'm on the socials, and if you hear me scream a bit on the internet, Chaos Elliot. Um, but my name's Elliot, and you can find me. All over the TTRPG space, I'm here, you might see me, you'll see me on Gehenna Gaming, you'll see me soon next week on uh, Carry On Comfort Studios for their Hades Town TTRPG. Um, so that's exciting. Um, so that'll be uh, January 6th, I believe. And yeah, um, I don't have anything set in stone, but I do plan to stream more on my own channel, Chaos Them, on Twitch. Woo. Make sure to follow them. They're amazing. All right, now, now we can bring in the myth, the legend, uh, Party Wide Games playing Rendis. I really thought you were gonna pull Cadence in after that, but I was ready for it. <laughs> Cadence deserves <laughs> the myth, uh, their the own legend needs no introduction. Yeah. Um, <laughs> hi, I'm Rendis of Party Life Games. Um, if I'm shouting out stuff, uh, we haven't been doing much because we were on break for holiday, um, but we will be starting back up a ton of our shows over on Party Life Games, uh, including a Vampire the Masquerade game that Cadence is in, and I have missed her, so I'm glad she's here for the one shot. Yeah. Um, yeah, you can check us out here um, on Valdrian's channel soon. We'll be starting up another mask game uh, a little further down in the next season and maybe even here for some more games. Now we can Amazing. Games. Yeah, this is, uh, all right, we, we gotta give a special round of applause uh, for uh, Magdalene Bloom. I, they are the only person that I am terrified to be in the same building with. Uh, just because she's such a sweet and amazing person, but also she is capable of such power in uh, amazing witchcraft that it is. I stand in awe of her at all times, uh, forever and always. Uh, but Magdalene Bloom uh, recapturing her character from our last campaign, as well as uh, Party Rife Games with Rindis. Uh, but Magdalene Bloom playing Molly O'Brien. Tell us about yourself. Oh gosh, I, I right now. I'm a mess, but yeah, that's just personal stuff. Um, just, just basically doing nothing right now, waiting for the vampire game to start in. Uh, uh, still job hunting, year two. Thank you very much, pandemic. Woo! <laughs> that's yeah. about it. Yeah. <laughs> Awesome sauce. Well, hopefully, if anyone wants to hire an amazing person, uh, definitely reach out to Magdalene Bloom. I swear she could do anything uh, and should be ruler of the world. But uh, yeah, I, I think that's about that, that is our, our cast members for the moment. We might have someone coming up a little bit later, but make sure to do those retweets, uh, like, subs, and all that stuff. This will give me more. Um, 
more of a pursuit to fill their minds with all sorts of sweet and or terrible things. Um, so yeah, do the thing. Uh, you guys ready? Yeah. Let's do it. Okay. Let's go. All right, we're gonna we're gonna synchronize uh, our our breathing uh, real quick, uh, just so that we can kind of get in sync with our heartbeats and everything like that. Um, so you know, on the count of three, like one, two, three, breathe in, breathe out. Perfect. Do you know that smell? uh that kind of comes up from gum that's been stuck on the back of chairs and under chairs it's kind of like this decrepit saliva smell uh that kind of lingers uh just below the seat like if you were to to go and accidentally touch one of them and you're like i wonder what was that squishy damp moist thing i touch from underneath the chair uh so you lower your head just below uh those old and scratched up leather chairs uh with numerous stains which you can only guess uh how they were um marinated and stained onto uh these kind of brownish leather chairs uh faux leather of course um coming down into the atmosphere just below in that that like area right between the chairs and the kind of mix of plastic and metal of the uh the floor of the bus uh you kind of breathe in that old saliva lingering on each and one of those uh pearly and colorful pieces of gum uh stuck underneath the chairs very much like some uh horrific uh pile uh, that one can almost think is very much like the uh, piles of trash you would see in the ocean. Um, kind of these last remnants of people that you're like, did they also take this trip into Bleakmore? Uh, what were they like? Maybe they're kids. Maybe this whole bus is used uh, for little ones before they uh, go off to school and they just stick these little things onto the bottom. How long have these items been here and are the people who placed them here is this the last genetic um piece of them that's left uh the rest of them decaying in some dirt uh miles away from here but you do get that sense that smell of it uh knowing that a little bit of them is uh kind of crawling up into your nostrils uh, and will no doubt linger there uh, for the remainder of your journey as this yellow school bus uh, goes down a dirt road. Um, the trees on either side kind of creates this almost tunnel of trees, uh, though it's coming upon uh, winter, uh, so a lot of the leaves are on the ground wilting away and no have kind of lost the beautiful gleam of fall with the oranges and the yellows. Uh, instead, they're just kind of matted down with these dark browns uh, mixing in with the mud and the dirt. There are few lights in between uh, where you are um, and the town that you're headed to. So it just seems like these dark shifting trees, uh, though there is a small amount of sunlight uh, kind of peering in through the skeletal-like trees. You four are the only ones on this bus uh except for the bus driver uh, a heavy set gentleman uh with very thick framed glasses which kind of make his eyes pop out in a somewhat comical way um wearing a uh, bull durham hat that is backwards uh short shorts uh, and a long sleeve collared shirt. Uh, you see like this winter fresh green tree hanging from his rear view mirror. Um, and other than that, the bus is empty. Lines and lines of empty chairs with uh, duct tape axes upon the broken and slash parts of it. It's not comfortable, but it's where you are, so. Same way as we did before. Who are you, Zella Rose, and how are you feeling? Um. So I'm giving my appearance an archetype, or just. 
just your appearance and your general mood. Uh, okay. How does it feel like sitting on this worn seat? Um, she's kind of ignoring it, honestly. She has a laptop that is glowing in her face right now, sitting on her, uh, on her lap, starting to die almost. And she's wearing um, gothic clothes and glasses, kind of like what I have, long purple hair. And she is just kind of messing with the necklace that's around her neck right now as she is typing with the other hand and just looking on the internet. She mostly just wants to be home right now so that she can plug her laptop back in and jump on the internet again. Yeah, and you're you're on this bus heading to Bleakmore because there is a therapist uh, who has some very out of the box solutions. Um, what plagues your character, and what kind of has led you to this moment? Um, she has recently gotten a little paranoid because she has lost somebody close to her, and she's um getting a little obsessed about it so somebody suggested that she go see someone to get some help excellent uh so while we have you um while you're sitting staring at the kind of uh intense glow from the computer um assuming uh, you don't have like one of those red filters upon it uh why don't you go ahead and give me a keep it together uh, just to kind of get how you're you're feeling if you're too anxious right now or if you're just on a blissful uh moment so that is 2d10 plus willpower uh 14. Ooh, oh, that's really good yeah that's uh that, that, that's perfect that is not all the way a success um so while you are on the computer, um, the worst thing that could happen to you happens. And everyone watching now can understand what that horrible, horrific thing is. We've all thought about it while we are on our computer with other people in the same vicinity. <laughs> um so zella unfortunately like you you click as you're trying to look through different things and you click on something that you've searched for in the past something uh that you watch in order to let the day wash off of you that provides uh joy uh and sleep afterwards uh what what is it that you clicked on um, she forgot to close her incognito porn tab <laughs> and starts playing full volume and she's like, God damn it, no! All that for and then closes everything. <laughs> so, so now she's just uh, I, Yeah, what, what is like the, I guess the lingering noise that, that people heard that might give them a clue as to like what you were watching in the past? Oh, they were, they were in mid climax at the very end of it <laughs> very loud yeah uh and so this kind of breaks the silence uh in the bus uh and even the bus driver like you can feel the bus kind of move a little bit as uh he takes his eyes off the road and, and kind of squints back to kind of like did i hear that or, or did i not um but yeah, we will swoop on over to Rain. How are you? What are you feeling? What are you look like? Everything. Tell, tell us about your day here on the, the magical school bus, as Chad is calling it. <laughs> well, you know, it's just a normal day on the magic school bus. Um, I wasn't even supposed to be here today. Um, but Rain pretty much looks like they're dressed for a funeral because they work at a morgue. Um, so they've got like short kind of like spiky black hair, but you know, piercings and like blue eyes and you know, tats all the way up their arms and stuff. They look like they belong to work in a morgue. They're that stereotype. So yeah, they're they're just, you know, vibing, listen to music and then like one earbud halfway out, they hear the fucking moan and they're like And then they just like look out the window. <laughs> <laughs> They're on <unfazed. laughs> Yeah. 
I mean, it happens, right? And sometimes the best thing to do is to pretend like it didn't happen because you can't really broach that subject in a comfortable way with strangers. Um, so why is Rain going to see uh, the dear old doctor for therapy? Well, Rain has... They feel like it's not an issue, but their co-workers don't really enjoy when they just, like, sometimes walk in and they're having a conversation with the body in the slab. Um, <laughs> they just don't like it. Um, there's, like, you might need to check that out, but I'm like, you can't see that. They're having it, they're literally, like, they're, they're right here. And then they just kind of look at them weird and they just, like, go over to the pulse, usually check it, like, you're doing it again, I know you're just fucking with me, but you really need some help. So... Uh, so you're being kind of forced to go to this therapist to deal yeah. with co-work I co-worker issues. Some people just don't like when you talk to the your other co-workers who don't have a pulse. Yeah. No, that's fair. That's fair. All right, we'll come back to you, Ray. I think I have something special. Uh, Rindis, how you doing? Rindis is doing fine fine is a word for it um they're not sure why they're here somebody had suggested it would be good for them um after the last episode and being the only person who made it back from their friend trip to japan um they were considered largely unhinged um after that talking about teeth and dolls and skin and how everybody died but she's not crazy. She's more awake than anybody could realize. And when she heard the moaning coming from the laptop, uh, she kind of perked up and did the thing where she looks across to see uh, which of the other two, because obviously it wasn't Molly's laptop. Uh, but she tries to scope out uh, who's who it was and gets up and just kind of sidles next to uh, Zella. It's just like, so, what you watching? It's a great question. I, I closed it, so it doesn't matter anymore. I mean, oh, did I you pull back up did you ever, headphones, though, and you can watch it on your own. Did you ever see the one where it was the, the guy and the girl and the guy and the guy and the Sasquatch and no? Oh, sorry. Um, I'm I'm a cryptozoologist, so anytime Sasquatch or the Mothman or a Chupacabra shows up in one of these videos, it's usually my job to research it and find out if it's legitimate or not. In this case, it was just a Chewbacca suit, mind you, but still very erotic. If I ever see one, I'll make sure to let you know. But Will no, you? I haven't seen that one. I could give you a card. Sure. And she'll reach into the, her, her little jacket uh, and pull out uh, just a card. It just says Rindis LaRussio, cryptozoologist. And in, underneath it, it says, yes, I know. No, I'm not crazy. <laughs> just hands it over. There you go. She's secretly questioning these, <laughs> the last part, and puts it in her uh, computer bag. Uh, as I said, I'm Rindis Nice to meet you. Uh, she like holds onto her laptop awkwardly and then like reaches over and goes, um, Zella, pleasure. It is. And nothing I like, mean, I guess, awkward situations bringing people together. It's true. And there's nothing to be ashamed about for sex. It's a natural thing for people to look at pornography. And I mean, we were just talking about the pleasure of introductions, so, you know, Maybe during this retreat, we could get to know each other a little better, but who knows? Maybe we'll see. I will tell. Rain pops their like earbud out and says, I don't even use incognito mode. Pops it back in. <laughs> and you see her perk up a little bit and say, oh, that thought. And she just scoots over to Rain's seat. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to pause that right there uh because i am chomping at the bit to uh figure out uh what molly is up to on this uh, magical tragic school bus 
Molly has no idea why she's on this stupid case. She, she just is left alone. Just stay away from everybody. But no, no. The, the authorities thought that, you know, she, she was a little, um, not all there, you could say, um, you know, she's fine. Everything's fine. Yeah. yeah I guess we know why you're going to see the therapist. <laughs> uh, but continue on, Rindis, as you hop on over, it sounds like, to Rain. Hi, and she just holds out her hand again. I heard uh, you don't use incognito. That's um, it's really bold and ambitious in this day and age. Yeah, I mean, at this point, like they know, they know what they know what's on these. They they see everything. What's the point in hiding? And if anything, they take your data, and then you just get ads that are better suited for you. You know, those late-night purchases. Yeah. You, you really should there. keep the NSA agent entertained if you're going to be there. I mean, if they're going to I mean, if they're going to watch, they might as well have a show. That That's what the camera's for. You did know that, right? Yeah, no, I know. I'm saying, like, they have yeah. every... They can access my camera. They can access my search history. What's stopping them? Hmm. I mean, honestly, yeah. if you try hard enough, you can actually block it. She just, Zella just says from. <laughs> and just like over the seat. Where's the fun in that? <laughs> I don't. It's I don't want anybody thing. on my computer. So. Oh, well, yeah. I don't use the dark mm. web. I just use the web web. The regular web, yeah. yeah. So, hey, have you heard of squatching? It's what all the kids are calling it now. I was just talking to my good friend Zella about it. You know, the, are the, you talking the about costume. that? Are you talking it in the film way or the going out and looking for cryptids way? Both. Now it's both. Yes. Do you, do you follow cryptids? Mothman, I like to believe, is my husband. <sighs> I knew there was something I liked about you. Yeah. And she just kind of like over the seat back towards Molly. She knows about cryptids. They. <laughs> they. Excuse me. They. They. They know about cryptids. Yeah, you hear the the bus driver kind of clear his throat and, and looking back uh, as lights kind of drift over these mounds that go up and down. It kind of bounces you off your seat for a little bit uh, as he clears his throat. <clears> throat> Yeah, I don't, I don't know about uh, these cryptids, but uh, if you're talking about uh, uh, the watching of the pornography, there are some channels, uh, individuals who like to watch people while they're on incognito mode. You know, have you ever uh, laptop on your, your stomach? as it were, and you look at the camera centered just above you and you wondered, sure, it's off, right? But what if it's actually on? What if someone on the other side is getting off to you, getting off onto something else? That's my logic. I don't care. Yeah, no, I'm totally down for that. And I mean, the Band-Aid doesn't really do anything anyways. People think it covers it and it doesn't. Besides, doesn't. there are things I can see you without. Oh my god, you too? <laughs> my co-workers don't like that. But I'm <laughs> glad I'm not alone. Uh, I, well, yeah, I have you co-workers can... and then I have other co-workers. 
you guys see like the lights of police uh, in front of you, the kind of black and red um, bouncing off of the trees around you and kind of coming in through the windows. Uh, it looks like there's two police cars on the road uh, stopping the bus as it slows. Um, just beyond it is a large wooden gate uh, with kind of like this stone curvature over it, this kind of entryway into Bleakmore itself, it looks like. Um, a dark-skinned officer kind of approaches uh, a woman uh, kind of uh, walking very slowly up to the bus and knocking uh, on the door uh, before it opens up. Uh, the bus driver kind of looking at you guys and looking back. Polly, put your head down. Hello. Uh, Bleakmore, uh, unfortunately, is, uh, well, this road is off limits for the time being, uh, due to the celebration. Oh, but we had an appointment. What are your names? Uh, wait, who, with whom? With the doctor. Okay. Dr. Austerlitz? Dr. Charles Austerlitz. You know, yeah, the doctor. Uh, kind of handsome, kind of European y sounding. Messes with uh, your head, digs around in there, finds out what's not quite connected in the wires, and rearranges them and hopefully fixes it. Yes, it's Dr. Charles Alcheris. And that's the same for each one of you. All right. Well, um, uh, proceed on. She steps off the bus and you hear it close behind her. And she kind of moves her police car out of the way so that you guys can proceed. Good job, guys. Because I gotta say, not going back to prison. Mm -mm. Just don't get caught. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's what you use the incognito tabs for, dark web. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. We're not allowed to travel internationally anymore either. So, can't really incognito that. I mean, you can. It's called being a coyote, but. Yeah. Not like the bus skinwalker coyote, the people coyote. Yeah, the wooden black gates kind of open up. Um, and just beyond the wall, you kind of come into this nice little quaint town, uh, filled with row homes that look like they're encompassed within this, uh, stone thick wall that wraps around it. Uh, you don't see the end of it, but, uh, just before you is a, uh, stone street, uh, that lingers on forward and then a route that goes to the right, which kind of leads into this underground tunnel. Uh, the first thing you kind of see is a hotel in this violet uh, neon light that says Hotel Desire. Uh, it's about six stories tall. This very old building. Everything here just kind of looks uh, somewhat old, like 1960s or 50s uh, type of row homes. Um, with tr quaint little trees with um, uh, red lights wrapped around them and going up to the row homes that they are next to. The streets are flooded uh, with these kind of flyers. Uh, it looks like this um, this woman with black fingernail paint is pressing her finger to her lips, uh, shushing the viewer um, with uh, times and dates and such uh, upon it. There are cars parked on either side of the street, um, but 
no sign of people. The bus driver opens the door. Uh, all right. Uh, I, uh, that's, that's it. I gotta get home to my family, so grab your things and uh, go. You're not sticking around for the celebration? No. No, I, I'm not. Are we supposed to meet somebody? I don't see anybody. Well, uh, I'm sure they have the address to the dear old doctor somewhere around here. If you don't already know it, but uh, it's not my problem. So. Zella will get off the bus as she opens the laptop trying to search for his address because she's sure she has it in an email somewhere. Yeah, you, you come to the address uh, pretty quickly. Um, it, it looks like this, uh, in looking at like the map uh, version of it, uh, it just goes, his office is down in an alleyway uh, with this little cul-de-sac of row homes with this little mini park in between it all. Uh, not too far from where you are right now. All right, I found it. Cool. I'm directionally challenged, so I'm just going to follow you. Yeah, lead the way. You, you've got it. I, I look at Molly and see if she's following, too, since she was on the bus, even though we didn't introduce ourselves. Yeah. Great. And she just, like... Starts walking. <laughs> yeah. You kind of, on your left, you see movie theater, a cinema, uh, playing the latest um, It 2, uh, the sequel. Um, though their doors are closed. Um, further on down, you see a restaurant as well as a cafe. Uh, and then approaching the spot where, you know, the doctor is that kind of uh, cul-de-sac uh, where his office is. Uh, you see like this iron rock gate uh, that prevents you access to the alleyway in of itself. It has this padlock wrapped around um, the gate uh, and it kind of stretches up a little bit uh, with barbed wire as well as kind of gothic architectural spikes just pointed to the sky. I could see nice why they sent me to this one. Fits the bill? Yeah. Still no sign of the party, though. Maybe it's inside? I hope so. Is there a doorbell we can ring? Yeah, are you uh, to the alleyway? No, but there are like buildings on either side with like uh, doorbells and such attached to the, just to the right. Just kind of like those old school ones where you just kind of press into it. Um, as we are waiting there, just standing, Zella like starts looking over her shoulder just to make sure like nobody's following. I feel like it's just Zella's gonna be making all of the wonderful roles, and I'm here for it. Uh, well, I have a I have a stalker. <laughs> <laughs> uh, why don't you go ahead and observe a situation, uh, which is your role plus perception. Uh, okay. Um, 13. 
Excellent. Uh, so you get to ask me one question, and this is kind of a meta question. Uh, something that you want to know concerning the area uh, that I, as the storyteller, will tell you truthfully, um, but uh, it's kind of up to your character to interpret how uh, they come about that information. In this case, probably by just looking around, but um, what's your question? Um, I'm looking for threats because she's worried that she's always worried she's being followed. So what here poses the biggest threat? That's understandable. Um, you have a smartphone, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you kind of uh, fidgeting a little bit because, you know, there's a reason you're looking around. Um, any person who's ever had someone uh, get too close to them kind of always fears that person will be around when they feel most vulnerable. And here in these empty streets, um, flyers just kind of blowing around with the wind. Uh, a place that should be full though now empty, uh, you definitely feel somewhat vulnerable. Your phone vibrates. It probably scares me, but I pull it out. Yeah. You see this, um, it, it's this Facebook Messenger app, right? Uh, it's a new person, someone that you haven't really engaged with at all. Um, definitely a bot uh, because it kind of has a, a, a very like busty woman uh, on the profile pic uh, and like doesn't have like any post whatsoever um, but it sends a video and it's paused and you can kind of see the back of your head in this video like where it's paused and you see the little triangle that you know that you could click on to press play I turn the volume down a little bit, and then I push play. Yeah. You see yourself uh, walking down these very same streets. Um, every now and then, one of the others comes into the shot. Um, but this hand reaches out, hairy, uh, kind of twisted up within its own uh, hair. Uh, kind of touches uh, the backside of your hair. Uh, the phone gets a little bit closer to it, as if he, this individual was smelling your hair. And then it kind of backs off. And you see in the video yourself looking around as you all are all in front of this gate. And then you reach for your phone. And that's the end of the video. The fuck? Uh, she puts her phone away immediately and her laptop away and she's like, okay, we need to get we need to get inside. There's somebody following us. Sold? Ring the bell. So which bell oh. are you ringing? Because there's no bell to this like alleyway, but there are bells to like the cafe, uh, the bar, as well as the cinema, and there's of course Hotel Desire. Uh, there's also a payphone uh, nearby in front of the cafe with all the chairs and such. I know which one I'm going to pick, but just for the sake of brevity, which one do you all want to go down? I want to go to the bar. That's a good choice, too. Okay. Molly? Voice of reason? What? What? I'll go, I'll go uh, where, where, where everybody else goes. Yeah. Uh, bar or hotel? Bar. No hotel. No. No hotel. <laughs> I was thinking... 
I was thinking the same thing, but uh, my experience was better than yours, if I recall. Okay, let's go get drunk. <laughs> you buy? That's bad. I'll buy, yeah, sure. No um, yeah, yeah. Um, as, as long as they're, uh, <laughs> they don't card, uh, Sophia's buying. Let's go. <laughs> Sounds good to me. I follow, but I keep somebody behind me at all times. I'll take the lead then. I'll follow behind. Yeah, you you move forward going uh, past a green, um, just kind of this old Fiat. Um, it's uh, windows heavily tented uh, just beyond the green uh, vehicle looking down an alleyway. You see uh, kind of these very circus-esque uh, booth and stands. Um, trash is on the ground, leftover popcorn, alcohol bodies. Um, but yeah, this like little little carousel with these horses staring forward with these black uh, eyes. Uh, the pole um, coming up from their midsection with bits of their paint uh, peeled off. Uh, it's not moving at all, but because of the wind, it kind of creaks and, and shifts back and forth. Uh, and once again, on either side, there's these circus-esque boots with uh, red and yellow uh, alternating stripes upon it. Uh, the bar, though, is a little bit further, so you're going to have to just kind of move on past the alleyway. Um, there are chairs and tables, leftovers of a, uh, a Sam Adams. Um, the curtains have been pulled over the two windows that are on either side of this door. Very thick wooden door. And you're knocking? Horrendous? Uh, yes, sorry, I was just writing what you wanted us to in <laughs> chat. Um, yeah, sense. she'll give she'll give a <laughs> she'll give a quick shave and a haircut uh, on the door. Yeah. Why don't you roll keep it together? Because as you approach, yeah. you're gonna hear something. Where are you? Keep it together. There you are. Okay. So I was rolling really well before the game started, so let's see <laughs> now that the spotlight's <laughs> on it. Yeah, okay. Oh, that's good. Uh, 11. All right. Yeah, that's all right. That's all right. Keep it together. Um, so as you're approaching, uh, if you've ever been underneath one of those sound machines where you can't hear anything until you're right directly below it, it's almost like that phenomenon as you're coming and approaching the door, uh, kind of lingering in front of it with your, your hand about to give it a, a knock. Uh, you hear this like heavy breathing um, breathing that you can kind of tell is hot and it's several individuals um, you can almost hear like nails uh, fingernails kind of splitting and scratching upon uh, bare flesh um, a moan escapes from somewhere maybe behind you uh, as you kind of are this almost 3D uh, room type uh, sounds surround you uh, of orgiastic, uh, colorful sounds. Well, I think we arrived at the right place. Um, and so I'm going to take the minus one in situations where the condition would be a hindrance because just, <laughs> yeah, just yeah. letting that stack on will be great later. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to take that one. She's she's distracted. Uh, <laughs> or where it'll be a hindrance because she's distracted. So, um, yeah. I, um, wait, it's a bar. Why am I knocking? And she's just going to try the door. <laughs> yeah. You open the door. Um, just inside, 
uh, you see an old wooden uh, bar table with drinks uh, covered in dust, uh, kind of in the the background next to a mirror. Um, the floor has been emptied and recently swept. All the chairs and tables pushed to the side. Uh, and it's a pretty bare bar, as if it hasn't been used in some time. Though there is a stairwell that uh, is leads above. Uh, you see a little bit of torchlight flickering uh, coming from upstairs. Uh, and also, uh, Puppy Lover wants to know what everyone's playbooks are. So uh, next time I call on you, just let us know what playbook you have for your character. Cool. Should I just do mine now since I'm already here? Yeah. Yeah, you're here. All right. Go ahead. Um, yeah, so uh, Rindus is a seeker. So, yeah, how's everyone else uh, as you uh, look into uh, this lovely area? Doesn't seem too bad, right? I mean, the music's a weird touch, but I'll take it, I think. I think that's just atmosphere, right? Yeah, totally. Nothing, nothing too weird there. Yeah, and so the, the music you hear, because these sounds, these sexual sounds that Rindis heard can't really be heard by anyone else, but you do hear uh, a slight, um, a very raw file of a music um, coming from above. Um, it sounds like the Rolling Stones' uh, time is on my side. Um, is, is there a table we can sit at somewhere where I can have my back to you the can wall? Take, That'd be great. Yeah, you can kind of pull out a table, because all the tables and chairs are just kind of pushed to the side as if they were preparing for some event. Uh, so you can grab a, pull a table out from the pile and grab a chair. Okay, I pull it to where my back's against the wall and nobody can sneak up behind me. <laughs> Um, and I'm also the seeker. Seeker high five. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm How's just Rain gonna... How's Rain and Molly doing? Yeah. yeah, I'm just gonna go and um, grab a seat alongside um, alongside everybody else and just kind of like check my phone see what playlists I have left and then just like pop out also um, the uh, the playbook that I'm using for Rain is the occultist nice yeah and looking at your phone um, it looks like there's something a matter with it it kind of uh, it's pixelated uh, and very slow uh, it's almost reminiscent of dial-up. I uh, go and just check, make sure. I'm like, oh, it says 5G. That's weird. That's it has to be the building. Okay, well, we work, we're out in the boonies, so you're not going to get a yeah. really good signal out here. It's true. They say 5G, and you know, it's probably just 3G, but you know, gotta look cool. So, um, is, was there anyone I behind played... the bar, bitch? No, this place is empty. There is no one here. Uh, the only uh, instance that there might be someone here is the flickering of the light from the second floor above you and um, uh, that music. And what I can obviously hear. Okay. Yeah, but it's um... kind of fading in and out within your ears. Like, Maybe it's just the wind. Maybe. Sexy wind. Okay. <laughs> What's everyone doing? <laughs> um, they have whiskey sour. I'll take one of those. Ooh, whiskey sour? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, they do. I'll go. I'll go take a look over the bar. Just, just full on, just hop and slide over. Yep. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, hopping and sliding over, grabbing uh, these uh, bottles. Each one. So none of them are um, uh, store bought. It looks like whatever alcohol they've concocted and put into bottles, this town did it itself. Um, it's very archaic. Stuff. Yeah, whole homemade, uh, maybe moonshine or something like that. But you do see that they're labeled with like, you know, angry orchard or a whiskey sour and, and all sorts of different things that you would normally see at like a regular bar. Just everything has been transferred over to these uh, antique like bottles. No reason to doubt the labels, right? No, I mean. <laughs> every, every reason, but can I have a, a bourbon? Absolutely. <laughs> While you're back there. One bourbon, one sour. Molly, what's your what's your poison? Fire on something blue. Want something blue? Blue is the best flavor. Whiskey sour, bourbon, and something blue. Uh, I'll pour two blues, a bourbon, and a whiskey sour. Uh. So uh, the first bottle you open up, uh, start pouring in the drink. It's not what you expect. The the it's thick. It drips out like a uh, cinnamon bun uh, cream as it just slips out of the bottle into this glass. Uh, kind of twirling about into uh, these cups that you have. Just give it a quick sniff. It it has a familiar scent to it, but it's kind of hard to place. Uh, it's almost like a sweet, maybe sour-esque type thing it's and there's little specks of what looks like pepper in it mm. all right well here's the whiskey sour <laughs> just kind of slide it over uh thank you the teeth for this over the gums and all that thick wood yeah that's what all the kids are calling it nowadays it's got two c's special if the bourbon looks anything like that i'm no longer interested yeah it's pretty every every bottle you open up and pour it's it's variations of this very thick liquid um there's different color specks within it well well, uh it smells fine to me so uh just gonna Got a I'm gonna kick, just like take a little sip. Yeah. All right. So Rindis and Rain are sipping. Molly, yeah. are you gonna sip it? I'm taking the whole bottle and just drinking from it. <laughs> yeah. It's a little Windexy, the blue. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Ammonia keeps yeah. you alive. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say it, it's not the antifreeze of the the homemade wine, but yeah, it's uh, has a it, it it almost is tasteless like water, um, but you do taste like the peppers and and stuff within it, um, but you know what? Nothing happens. Not everything's okay. You are safe and sound here in this bar, uh, here in Blackmore, um, and it's just liquid that you ingested. How much harm could it be? If I'm looking around, is there anything I I can see, like, 
ghosty wise or is or is everything looking pretty normal uh looking around you do see um uh, kind of as because you guys have come in uh, and so there's a little bit of movement so the curtains themselves kind of shift and move every now and then uh and you can almost see uh something that's that's kind of very tall um these great antlers uh, standing in the middle of the street uh, kind of staring at the building that you're residing in. But it's there and then it kind of shifts, the curtains shift and then you can't see it anymore. Hmm. Rain is pretty unfazed. <laughs> like, Doesn't Midwest. say anything though. That's what I've come to expect. <laughs> Yeah. Hmm. I like this place so far. Not, nothing out of the ordinary yet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> is there like a contact number for the doctor? Normal. Uh, there is. There is a contact number. Yeah. I can try to call him, I guess. If your phone's not getting service, I pull out my phone to see if it's getting service. Quickly swiping away the video that was still up. Yeah. Um, looking back, there is no video. There's not even a message. Uh, your Facebook messenger is clear and no evidence is left of what you saw earlier. But uh, you do see you have one bar left. I have a, I have a bar. This is mm -hmm. terrible, and I hate it. I would like to go back home, um, but I will try to call the doctor. Right. You hear the doctor on the other side? Hello, this is Dr. Charles Austerlitz. Uh, who am I speaking to? Uh, Zella, Rose, I'm here with three others. We're supposed to be coming up today. Oh yes, my um, my seven p.m. Um, you do realize it is uh, nine p.m. at this moment, correct? The bus just dropped us off. We are trying to find our way in. Hmm. Definitely right. not well, drinking. That's unfortunate. Well. Um, what we can do is I can reschedule um, in the morning, um, let's say 8 a.m. Uh, you and I can talk. Uh, in the meantime, uh, lucky for you, uh, one of my other patients couldn't make it. Uh, so I have a, uh, a hotel room uh, at Hotel Desire that is open for tonight uh, that you can use free of charge. All four of us? Yeah, sorry, I um, I can't put up anyone else, but maybe they have extra rooms. Uh, okay, um, I put it like I pull it away from my mouth and tell the others what just happened. I'm like, so he's saying that we're two hours late and he won't see us till tomorrow morning. We have to stay at the hotel. Oh. Okay. Well, that's better than oh. staying on the street. That's uh, true. You said the 8 hotel did seem very morning. inviting. Yeah, 8 a.m. sharp will be fine. How, how do we get in? Because there was a gate. It was locked. Because it's closed. It'll be open uh, tomorrow morning. Okay. Great. Rest awesome. Assured. Thanks. How are you feeling, Rose? I'm, I'm fine. Everything's great. Everything's wonderful. Yeah. You don't feel uh, that anxiety uh, that seems to be constant in your life? Is it too much at the moment? If I told you, you probably wouldn't believe me. So it's always there. No, I... It's always there. It never leaves. There... 
I think they're following me. That's why I would like to go inside the locked gates, please. Wait, is someone following you? Pretty sure. You know, the um, unfortunate thing about anxiety, um, other than it being a constant struggle that most of humanity deals with on a day-to-day is that part of it is uh, is founded. Um, that sense of dread that something bad could happen at any moment. Like what happened to uh, is it Ollie? Is that her name? Am I pronouncing that right? Allie. It's, it's Allie. Yeah. And just like what happened to her, I'm sure she felt uh, some sense of dread and then it came out to be true. I was shown, I received a video of someone that could see me, that was seeing me walk down the streets. I'm not making this up. It's not there anymore, but I'm not making this up. I'm not crazy. Look, Zella, I believe you. I believe that your anxiety is well-founded, that there is an individual who seeks your destruction uh, and seeks to have you vulnerable on a day-to-day basis. I understand that. That is actually happening. I believe you, Zella. Also, my question to you then, if this is true, and it is true, what happens next? I I don't know. I haven't seen it. Because according according to the biopsy of your... um, was it your girlfriend? Yes. Or someone you were close to. Um, horrific things were, were done uh, to her prior to death. We really don't need to go into details. Thank you. Yes, I, I know what, I I know what happened. Run. Don't run from the details, Zella. Why don't you describe to me and to your fellow... Uh, patients what the body was like when you found it when you saw it I'm sure rain um, had something to do with the care of it you know she does work at a morgue Zella please say something right yep. describe yep um she was torn from from apart. She was torn apart. She was missing pieces of her. She was utterly destroyed and unrecognizable. Except for the necklace I gave her. What was the necklace of? I will hold it up. Uh, it looked like this. We had a matching pair. I remember yeah, Rain, you... Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, no. That... I remember that one. That one was tough. Honestly, but... She talked about you. She just wanted you to be okay. What What do you mean she talked about me? Yeah, you know, how they talk to you once when they're laying down? They kind of like enter your head? Like a ghost? I guess, yeah, ghost. I don't know, it's kind of like a brain thing for me. Um, sometimes, like, my coworkers, they don't like when I have conversations out loud. Um, but no, as messed up as she was, <laughs> she just kept thinking about you and hoping that everything would be okay with you. And she, she loved you a lot. And she doesn't really remember too much about who attacked her because. I think she was drugged or knocked out or 
something. I, I at some point, I, I don't know. Um, but she was kind of scared. There's definitely that I can't understand why somebody wouldn't be, but her thought was of you. And now I know that that's you. I mean, Zilla's not a common name, but... Yeah. No, not in today's society. Well, that... It's reassuring, I guess, but she's, like, starting to tear up and her makeup starting to run. Rain, um... There's kind of this this flickering of of memories as you're you're talking about this. Uh, why don't you go ahead and see through the illusion? So that is your roll plus soul. And I got an eleven. You feel this pressure upon your neck, um, kind of, it, it doesn't hurt, but it is kind of preventing you from breathing all the way. Uh, there's a sh sort of uh, shortness to your breath uh, as these fingers wrap around your throat uh, in a gentle and almost loving way. Um, the hands are wet. Uh, moist with some sort of thick, clear liquid, um, and before you, you see this body on top of you, one arm extended out from uh, the left side of its body, grabbing onto your neck as your back is on the steel tables of the morgue. Deep lacerations uh, upon her chest that cut deep enough for you to see the rib cage kind of opening up like a flower. There is no head upon this body. And yet you feel its knee rubbing against you in a very sensual manner right in between your legs. And you feel your mouth open up as you scream and then you're back. And that image is just kind of like this blurry reflection in the water that is very hard to grasp onto. That's new. Are you okay? <sighs> Confused. Can't tell if there's a ghost trying to flirt with me. Or it. Memory from her experience popped in. It's a lot. Do you remember anything of what they told you? Did they tell you anything about her ribs or someone. Was. Because Rain is just, like, thinking about that. Like, they remember the autopsy, but, like, they also are just, like, trying to see fact from fiction. Um, so... They... They said her ribs were ripped open. Yeah, I felt that. I remember that, too. Now that I'm thinking about it. I think I experienced her death. That was... I... Not cool. I'm sorry. 
It's okay. Um, see why she was thinking about you the whole time. If that helps. As um, long as he doesn't catch up with us, then we're good. Yeah, I know. I'm gonna kick that asshole in the... F I I'm gonna do something about that. I... Fuck them. Yeah, um, and just, like, Rain's never had that kind of direct kind of experience either. Like, they talk to ghosts. But to have the whole thing play out was just new, so they were just trying to be like, okay, wait, is this me? Is this what's happening? So that's why there's a little bit of confusion. Yeah. So. You hear a heavy knocking at the door. The door shutters, and you see a little bit of dust uh, come from it. Uh, as something on the other side hits it three times. Boom. Boom. Zell's not moving. <laughs> She's just staring at the door. Rain's kind of zoned out, like... Still kind of reeling? <laughs> I... Why are they knocking? It's a guard. They should just come in. I just yell, it's a bar, the door's open. Yeah, there's like this silence lingering um, around you. Though you do hear kind of the shifting of weight on the second floor just above you. A little bit of the dust from the uh, floorboards uh, kind of come down like little fireflies. Hey, Rindus, you want to answer the door? Oh, absolutely. I love people. Uh, she'll, <laughs> she'll get up and go over to the door. <laughs> Opening it up? Yeah. All right. Hi, welcome to the bar. What can I get you? And for that, uh, we will let our new individual uh, um, slip on in. Uh, you. Things right now. Uh, so yeah, store. what do they see? Uh, so what they see is a uh, very ashen blonde, long hair, uh, in two very thick braids that come down to about her midsection. Uh, she's wearing this uh, large black brimmed hat and. Uh, pink crop top with a um, sweater cardigan over it and tie-dye jeans. I hope I'm not late. No, certainly not. Never, never late to a party, fashionably, if anything, but hi, we were Is all there... just getting drunk. Oh, well... Is there anything left? Mm-hmm. A lot of it is thick wood, though. Uh, that's what the kids are calling it now. Thick wood? Mm-hmm. It's exceptionally thick with two C's. It... You know, I went to a party once where I drank something questionable. What's another time? I mean, okay. hey, it's... We're all adults here, and um, as long as you're not driving. Oh, no, I, I, I'm from Brooklyn. We don't know how to drive. Well, there you go. Nothing to worry about. 
um, pay no attention to the sound upstairs. I'm sure whoever it is is having a lot of fun. You guys hear that, right? They are, they've been going at it for a while, like, kudos to their stamina. No, nope. we didn't hear it. In uh, just oh. as Rendis like says that, uh, you guys start to hear these moans coming from above, the slapping of skin against skin. Um, and one voice sounds human, the other... There are sounds that are common among humans, and there are sounds that are common amongst animals and this noise escaping from one of their lips from above certainly sounds like something in between molly molly squatching <laughs> uh, is you haven't gone primal. up there yet <laughs> i'm getting there but uh i'm a little distracted at the moment hi Rindis LaRussio, nice to meet you. Uh, Ashlyn Crawley. Okay. Uh, a Crawley like the, the occultist? Um, loosely. Interesting. I knew a friend who knew magic once. I had a boyfriend who... He probably still knows magic, but I don't know him anymore. That seems to be the way of things with people who know magic. He was taken by his sister. I'm sure they're having a grand time. Well, yeah. The love of my life literally ripped his heart out. I tried to kill his sister. And him. I eat people, I so, him. you know, it's all here or there. I'm, I'm sorry, a, what? There is a choice. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> We're speaking in metaphors, Zella. Don't worry. It's fine. I talk to ghosts. Yeah, Rain talks to and ghosts. And no magic. And are you an occultist, too? I kind of sense that about your aura. I mean... Talking to ghosts comes with the territory. I, uh, I mean, I have, just don't think I have, about it. I have the notes of the, the, the dead friend I mentioned. That's I, I can dabble a little bit, but he was a magician. I just, I'm a, uh, what's the word, a charlatan when it comes to magic? I, I can act like I know what I'm doing, but. I believe it. <laughs> wow. I can pretend. <laughs> I don't pretend. I'm trying to figure out what he wrote. He left so much. This is what happens when you have to clean out your dead roommate's room. They, they Wait, leave all their magic crap. Did you the dead roommate? No, he had his heart ripped out. Oh, so right. Somebody else Sorry. Tried to eat your dead roommate. He else probably uh, did eat him. She, pro she probably did. It's complicated. Is that what your Facebook relationship status states? <laughs> Usually, <laughs> yes. Um, so I don't want to just around. keep you here in the doorway. Would you like the drink? Absolutely. Well, I'll mix her also... something, something blue. Yeah, I mean, everything that comes out of these bottles are thick, white liquid uh, with uh, usually what looks like pepper or salt uh, mixed in with it. Maybe some rosemary. Smells spicy, though. Mm -hmm. she'll, she'll take a drink. She'll take a deep drink of it, too, like college girl at a party. Oh, yeah, it's, you know, like, um, if you ever drink year-old eggnog, it gains, like, this lovely, uh, 
thick quality. And so when you oh. ingest it, it kind of clings to your throat and you can almost feel it like a slug going down uh, until it pitter patters into your stomach. Uh, and it's very much like that. Well, I actually felt that. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, no, I immediately had that visual. <laughs> I almost need to work it down. And told you, you hear, with... like, above you, the noises have shifted a little bit. Uh, and it, it's more like a... <laughs> with, like, some crying along with it. Just... Oh. I think... There's... You know, I've been to a nightclub that has things like that happen. I think they're almost at the end. <laughs> I've heard it well enough. They are almost there. But uh, good for them. Kind of rooting for them at this point. <laughs> right? Which one? <laughs> Either one. Both. Either. Let them both get there. Yeah. Yeah. So, um... I'm, I'm gonna do a uh, a little luck roll. Uh, so everyone roll a d6, and the person with the lowest number gets a treat. Oh man! All right. D6. Four. No, sorry. A d d d10. Sorry, d10. I keep oh, thinking okay. it's a d. I keep Mitch, I keep I wanting I to shift this game to <laughs> a d6 because I'm evil. Wait, how? Um. How do you just do a regular roll? <laughs> on the, um, roll 20. In the, That's not there's fair. like a little tool one. on the top left, and if you go over the roll 20 or the d20, uh, it'll bring some dice up just for yeah. a regular roll. Got it. <laughs> oh, somebody yeah. still got a one. Okay. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> yep. Figures. Yeah, so. Wait, I rolled a d6. Hold on. I have to roll the. I hate you, Mitch. <laughs> <laughs> Let me retry that. Okay. I was winning, and then I had to We're roll. so good at these rolling things. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah. it looks like Molly and... Did we have another person who got a one? No, though those were That was D6s. on a D6. Oh, then just Molly. Awesome. Um, you kind of feel uh, something wet hit your, your head, and, and then again, and it's warm. Um, it, it definitely, like... That instinct to touch it uh, rises up in the pit of your stomach. What do you do? Back up two steps. My hood and flick it. <laughs> Breath. Yeah, a little bit of blood. Fling it up flick. to the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it like blood. Uh, kind of splatters out from the top of your, your head over the hood and everything onto uh, Rain uh, and our newcomer, uh, Crowley, right? Yes. Wait, hold on. That's not... That's not the good stuff. That's the... Ugh. That's the danger There's... liquid. <laughs> Danger not thick liquid? too, is it? Uh, but... Say that again? Oh, right, sorry. Gotcha. Rindus, what did you say? Oh, I said it's not thick too, is it? No, it's, it's think blood. So. Blood, yeah. It, it always has that consistency of almost like milk uh, rubbing in between your fingers, almost sticky. Did blood just drip off the ceiling onto you? I don't I look think up they're at having the ceiling. fun up there. Uh, well, I said it was almost over. Uh, I, A bit messy. Some people are into I'm it. Conflicted. That's fine, I guess. Yeah, I'm, I'm conflicted because it still sounds like it's consensual up there. I don't want a yucky yum, but like... Still concerned? Mildly. Yeah. How are we going to oh. explore this? You know you want Yeah. 
I do. I really do. You guys don't mind if we go take a look, right? At this no. point, yeah. We know what's going on. <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll be I'll be back. Um, my my danger word is tangelo. So if you hear just in the conversation, I bring up a tangelo. It means it's probably bad. Good, good to know. All right. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, she'll just hammer back the last of her thick wind and head upstairs and gesture for Molly to follow. <sighs> Would you guys like some more backup? Absolutely. Back it up. I look over and so you want to stay here or, you, or should we not split the party? I am not staying by myself, so okay, if you're leaving, let's go. I'm leaving. <laughs> well, let's go. You can stay on the stairwell. Yeah, we could keep guard. In. Yeah, you guys uh, carefully, step by step, go up the wooden stairwell. Uh, much like the moaning before the the wood kind of creaks and uh, shrivels up from your footfalls um, coming to the top as uh, who's up in front Rindus correct yeah. Rindus you see in between the wooden banister um, this naked individual uh, well toned and yet looking as if he's hadn't he hasn't eaten in some time uh, his um, his butt kind of facing you um, and you can kind of see the, the bones and such uh, sticking to his skin uh, his head is bobbing over some sort of item that's attached to the wall. You see thick blood dripping from his face as he's turned away from you onto the floor. Uh, and he is on his knees in this puddle of blood. But you see his head continue to go back and forth against the wall. This kind of... Oh. Oh, uh, excuse me, hey, everything all right over there, Chief? You hear a cracking sound uh, as the neck twitches. Uh, you see him with his knees start to pull back this thing that he's been engorging on looks like this wooden dick with barbed wire wrapped around it. There are pieces of flesh, the inner gums and teeth uh, on the barbed wire itself as he pulls back and kind of looks at you. Uh, very slowly turning to you you see that he has no eyes it looks like they are just these empty holes that go all the way to the back of his head uh, a little bit of patch of hair covering where uh, the hole leaves out his mouth is ruined lacerations stretching his mouth all the way up to his high cheekbones the flesh looks like it's been peeled back and he has no teeth whatsoever blood continues to drip down his face uh, as pale as they are as he looks at you and places a hand down to the side and then another as he starts to crawl towards you his mouth kind of opened up in that same sucking sound huh that looks appetizing 
She takes another uh, drink. So everyone, why don't you keep it together? Well, everyone that can see. I think it's Rendis and, uh, I mean, everyone else probably just hears something occurring. But for those who took a peek, go ahead and roll Keep It Together. Mm. Would you say that this falls under that penalty that I've got going? Oh, yeah, definitely. Okay. Always. Yeah. Yeah. I love, I love, I bring it up because I love giving myself the handicaps in this. Yeah. Here we go. No, it's still a 10. Okay. Um... Nice 20. Oh, snap. Yeah, I'm debating if I should roll my PTSD or not. I think so. You should go ahead and, and do that. <laughs> That's what, 2d10? Yeah. Ooh, a six. I don't have my book with me. I don't know what it does, but it's not good. <laughs> um, I got it open. I can find it for you. I got it, too. Uh, but we'll, uh, rend this. Um, so success with some complications uh this is yeah. freaky but you've been in this place before this feels familiar uh because of your your history um but it's starting to kind of crack uh you kind of see flashbacks of when you were in that writhing pit of worms uh naked and vulnerable with things coming in and out of your orifices repeatedly again and again um, for what feels like a very long time. You can almost feel a scream kind of coming up into your throat. Just like the worms you used to choke on. I'll go ahead and mark scared. I, uh... And uh, well, moving on to Crowley, you well, you had a failure for your PTSD. I did. It's all coming back. Things, um, the things from your past. Uh, you feel kind of these hot lines uh, on your back. Um, and anyone standing behind you can kind of see that your shirt uh, or jacket is kind of clinging to your back, but there is a significant amount of pain. Yeah, she's gonna... Even though, like, seeing this didn't, like... She was okay with the seeing it, but the, uh... The, the more she saw the guy's face and the sex toy, she kind of just drops to the ground and hunches over, um, trying to like broaden her back to try to like make the pain go away. And she just lets out this blood curdling scream. Yeah. Like she's ex feel experiencing you the whip. Yeah, you feel like these fingernails uh, on your back kind of poking uh, their way through the pain. Is there anything else that comes with the failure? Um, well, we'll say you take a minus one to your stability. If that's fair. Okay. That's what I was gonna do, anyways. M Molly, Molly, I, I don't think he's friendly. <laughs> Just a hunch. <laughs> Just gonna start backing up and uh, try and help. Um, try and help. Try and help Ashlyn up. Can I get back downstairs? I don't think he's he's a friend. 
Okay, okay. She kind of, she stumbles, kind of hunched and, and limping now. I will go try How's to help. Zella, Rain, yeah, and Molly doing. Go ahead, Zella. Um, I go to try to help uh, Crowley when I see them coming downstairs. Also, we got a baby. I do not look in the room. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's the way I'm We need a bane. <laughs> yeah, we're <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I already got like my dad things... rolls out. Yeah, bad things have to happen. Uh, so, for this particular bane, two things are going to happen. One, I'm going to re describe the room that you're coming down into. And second, uh, your next rolls are going to be uh, nightmare mode, which is 2d6s instead of 2d10s. Uh, you're welcome for that. It's whatever your next roll is. If we meet our next goal, we'll switch you over to uh, 2020 mode, which is 2D4s. Um, but maybe we won't get there. Uh, so as you guys are coming down, you the bar has shifted a little bit, but it's, it's ever so slightly. Um, the walls are covered with this image in dripped in red, almost like a Virgin Mary-esque uh, drip red painting. Uh, but it looks... It's, it's of this naked woman with these wires uh, coming out uh, of her stomach, her breasts, uh, her midsection. Every bit of her flesh seems to be punctured and expanding out with these wires uh, stretching out. Um, but they each look vaguely familiar. The Molly, it's wires you. Or the person. The person. It's Molly. brought us here to get saved, but no, 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 we're good, we're gonna get worse, we're gonna just all lose it until Sufficiently terrified. Yeah, this is something. Are we all gonna be strung up on the wall like that? I'm voting no. Yeah. Who wants to vote I no? I hope not. Me? I'm voting no. Let's not be at the freaky bar anymore. Two hands. Yeah, yeah. Let's leave the bar. Yeah. I'm I'm ready to leave. Um, okay. hotel? Question mark? Hotel. Oh. Hotel. Hotel. Oh, um... Do you think the hotel's gonna be better? <laughs> it's different. No. No, no I've no, seen no. things pop out of mattresses sometimes in you... visions, but, you know, it's fine. Oh, not, you not know what happens to us in hotels, but we're stuck here. We got, might as well be somewhere safer than this. I just don't want to look at this. Anywhere is better than this right now. Mm-hmm. 
Maybe, maybe the hotel will be better. Maybe there's like a motel that's out of town that's within walking distance. <laughs> they... We can't go back the road we came. The police are out there. And they know we're here. Uh huh. They also know we're here to see the doctor, He's... so they might think they won't we're dangerous. Us out, and we'll be fine. I mean, I might be able to talk us out of being scrutinized too heavily. True. How, we just need to get out far, of this. How far away was the nearest town? Oh, uh, like four hours. By bus, right? Yeah. <laughs> have fun. Okay, cool, so we're not really First going stop. anywhere tonight. <laughs> not on foot. I mean, we could. I mean, you could always try the forest. That sounds, <laughs> that sounds worse somehow. We could, we could steal a car. We could steal a car, but I'm not a. I don't drive. Um, I don't drive anymore. I never got my license. I just take the subway, or walk. Or hitchhike. Do either of you have a license? I yeah. I have a license, but I don't know how to hijack a car. That's I'm sure I can find issues. a YouTube video if I can get enough service. <laughs> we can <laughs> get a signal. Yeah. Service. Um, that doesn't exist. So our options are trying to find a car or just. Um, Tough it out? Hotel. Yeah. Alright. Uh... Okay, who's got a coin? Let's just let's coin toss it. What time is okay. it? Uh, it's ten. So leaving wouldn't actually even make any sense because by the time we got there it'd be two, we'd get like three hours to sleep max and then we have to drive back. Oh, oh yeah. I mean, I guess if we were to take okay, so back. we're stuck. Yeah. Let's just go to the hotel. I hate it. Heavy, but... heavy, like some weight uh, on the stairs. Let's go. Yeah, it's quickly rushing out. Yeah, you guys rush out of. Uh, the door back onto the street. It looks like it, it's rained. You see puddles um, on the road uh, in between the stones. Uh, and then reflected in one of those puddles right there. Hotel Desire. Most of its windows are boarded up. So whose desire is this exactly? It's the only way to find out to go in. Probably. All right. Guess we're gonna find out. Let's go. Yay. You come into the hotel. Um, it's very old school. Right? Even the individual behind the counter before several of these boxes with keys hanging uh, from them uh, looks like a uh, dressed in like a bellboy attire, you know, the red pants, the red uh, suit uh, with that little circular hat uh, placed upon his head. You see a little bit of black strands poking their way out from under his, uh, his hat. And he has like this crooked nose as he looks up at you. Uh, smiling, one of his teeth is, is missing. The whole lobby uh, has these circular chairs uh, and uh, almost like bar stools placed around circular tables. There are fresh flowers uh, around, but there's these two stairwells that kind of lead up, and it looks like it's dark above. And this whole place is very dark. You notice that there isn't actually electricity here. It's just candlelight 
and lanterns, which are providing the light in this place. You see a couple of cracked dinner plates uh, next to one of the tables. Uh, and the gentleman uh, behind, after smiling at you, uh, looks back down at the book he's been uh, gazing at. Um, the whole place uh, smells um, like a retirement home. Clorox and bleach and all sorts of cleaning materials kind of thick in the air along with something else that's lingering just behind it. Lovely place you have here. Um. The gentleman looks up. Well, hello there. It's, uh, well, come on in. Don't, uh, close the door behind you. We've, uh, lost power, so it's best that we keep everything secure for the time being. How long is the The doc. What was the question? It was just a lot of you, and it sounds like you're excited to stay here at Hotel Desire. Oh, uh, go, uh, go ahead, Ring. Yeah, uh, how long's the power been out? Well, uh, let's see. Well, the, uh, electrician, uh, came in about, uh, well, Tuesday, and it's, uh, I believe it's Friday right now. Uh, the electrician confirmed that, yes, indeed, uh, we will probably lose power, uh, sooner than later due to an electrical issue. We, this place is some, somewhat old. It has a long history down here in Bleakmore. Um, but yeah, I would say, um, maybe it's, it's been, uh, eight hours since we've lost electricity. So, uh, yeah, eight hours, but don't you worry. Uh, I do have a lantern here, uh, for, for one of you, um, but, uh, what, what brings you here? We're kind of, uh, have no vacancies, uh, tonight. It's, uh, you know, the big festival and all. Um, the doctor told us to come here because we got here too late. Oh, Dr. Austerlitz. Yeah. He kind of looks uh, over to the side, uh, and you notice he's staring at this large portrait of a uh, an old man with thick glasses, uh, a lovely suit, and a labrador uh, next to him, sitting down on a very uh, dark leather chair. Um, the eyes kind of have that appearance of always following you uh, as you move, and uh, he kind of smiles over at it. Ah, well, the dear old doctor, he sure likes taking care of his, uh, clients, uh. All right, well, I understand that a patient dropped out, so you will be securing his room. That's, uh, that's room 207, um, just, uh, just on above here. So why don't you come over here, sign your name, uh, and I'll give you the key and the lantern, and you should be good, uh, to get some rest. How many people can sleep in the one room? Well, we have a twin-sized bed, uh, for the most part. Um, I can bring a thick blanket for you. We just had some washed, uh, uh, earlier today, so I can bring those up for you. But that's, that's kind of all that we can have for you. So you're going to have to figure out a way for each one of you to, to sleep on it or maybe sleep on the floor. I'm sorry, I can't help you out more than that. But like I said, we do have a festival going on here. Uh, so a lot of the rooms are full. The doctor did mention that we might be able to work something out with you for extra accommodations. Is that something we can discuss? No, you may not. Like I said before, the festival has in the patrons who have decided to to bring their visage up into this wonderful bleak moor, the, they filled up every room and we 
we have about 50 rooms in this little hotel. We occupy usually about 95% capacity, and uh, well, with you all, we are we are overbooked. So I see. I appreciate Man. you asking, uh, but uh, unfortunately, uh, well, I could One ask some of the final patrons question. if they don't mind sleeping with uh, some y'all. I can handle I can handle that, but uh, question following that information. Um, <clears throat> besides uh, my companions here, um, who mm -hmm. else in the hotel on a scale of you know one to ten would you rate as like the most attractive patrons here that I might inquire about sharing a room with? Oh, well, uh, to be honest, uh, I, I think everyone is beautiful in their own right. Um, but if you had to put a numerical in... value of one above another. Uh, and he points uh, a long uh, fingernail over at Rain. Well, I think they look. Uh, oh no, 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 no! I, I it's my compatriots. To be ex <laughs> they quite, they quite are. Yes, but I don't think they're willing to venture with me to finding a room elsewhere. I was trying to find with other. I can patrons, sleep on not... the floor. I sleep on the beds at work. <clears throat> Those are pretty flat. I was more looking to find another room so that I could free up some space in the one we have. Any patrons not including uh, my scrumptious friends? Well, your scrumptious friend right there, uh, you know, there's a lot of people come in here from all over, and, and honestly, they all look wonderful to me. All right, I guess I'll just start knocking on doors then. Okay, thank you very much for your time. No, Are people in the room, by the way? Uh, there is no one else in the lobby. It is empty, and it is a big lobby, too. Uh, and it's dark upstairs. Uh, you see these wooden stairwells just kind of circling above and going up. Just sign, uh, put your, uh, put your Johnny, uh, mm -hmm. on this here, uh, paper. Uh, and, uh, is that a vib vibration? I I'm sorry. Sorry, it goes off sometimes. Uh, it's 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 my it's my travel it's my traveler. Uh, okay, no. Sometimes that's fine. it gets a little this out is... of control. We have uh, several of these uh, uh, things uh, that if if you want to experience, uh, we've always been. Uh, and, and just sign your name, and I'll I'll give you the lantern for you to get get to your room. He like grabs a little uh, key and places it. I will partially sign my name so it's not my full signature I just do like Z, uh, ZR and like scribble and then take the key Excellent. yeah I'll put uh, Ashlyn Crawley I'll let some Molly Let's see if they go what first kind of, what, uh, what kind of lantern is this that they hand is it a battery-operated uh, it... lantern? No, it like no, it is. Yeah, it it, it looks like uh, it, it's a, it's definitely an oil lantern that you kind of hold out, uh, and it has glass all around it and a little flickering uh, light, uh, burning light in the center of it. So uh, it's not very bright, but it'll get the job done. There's like fingerprints and stuff kind of crusted on the the windows of the the lantern. Just sign the book and very well know who I am. <laughs> um, and then uh, I'll just sign it as well. Actual name. Well, here's your uh, your lantern. Did you want some uh, some M and M's? And he kind of points to this little white bowl filled with different colored M and M's. Hmm. No, but thanks, though. Of course. No, thanks. All right. Well, uh, feel free. <laughs> go upstairs. Uh, you're going to go up two flats of stairs. Uh, and like I said before, it's room 207. 
If you hear any footfalls in the hallway, well, that's just me. Uh, I usually clean up the hallways while everyone's sleeping. Good to know. I'm just gonna start heading upstairs. Okay, Who has the lantern? Um, I think Crowley said that they took it. Yeah, I took the lantern. I'll, I'll go first. Excellent. Yeah. The lantern. So going up the stairs, there's like this carpet uh, that has been uh, nailed into the center part of the stairs. Very old and very worn out. Um, they have these floral like patterns and so you kind of go up and then you turn and then there's another stairwell that brings you to the first floor. There are about 20 rooms here and they, it's kind of laid out in a T uh, fashion uh, with a hallway with doors on the left and right and then you see two short hallways uh, on your immediate left and right. Of course, the stairwell continues to go up to uh, the other floors, yours being on the second one, room 207. Rednis, did you want to start knocking on doors now? Yeah, I, um, yeah, might as well. Uh, twin is not a whole lot of room for snuggling, so I'm going to try my luck elsewhere. You're not, I mean, nobody's you could offended go by foot that. ahead. Make it Normally work. do, but where's the fun in that if it's just sleeping? Nice. <laughs> and she just uh, finger guns. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna try my luck. Yeah. And Rindis, you do realize uh, that if you're gonna knock on these doors, there will be no light, unless you take that lantern. <sighs> this is fine. I got, I got my cell phone. I can flip the camera to night vision for as long as its battery will last, because I haven't taken it out at this point. It probably has some battery left. It's fine. Yeah, so if, if to be clear, <laughs> to be clear, you are in this dark, dank hotel using your night vision uh phone just so like I, in every horror found I movie out of there character is. I understand what I'm doing <laughs> to myself but I need to remind you of one of my disadvantages which is when they're horny they don't think straight <laughs> yeah they're yeah. adjacent when they're horny <laughs> well, and, and is... albeit what happened in the bar was scary but <laughs> All right, adrenaline so you're going is to adrenaline. the first floor, uh, Rindis, alone and into the dark. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try on this floor. I'm going to start knocking from, like, our door out and, and see if I can stay within close proximity and venture further out as it goes. I probably won't go up or down a floor, but I'll try this floor first before returning. Yeah, so they need to go up one more flight of stairs to... Uh, oh, I'm going to be on our flight. I don't, I'm okay. not abandoning the group. Yeah. <laughs> All right. You know, I don't, so, go ahead. I don't mind sleeping in a puppy pile. Oh, I need I you to come with me. I sleep in the bed, so, like, I don't care where I sleep. When you're tired, you're tired. Just don't sleep with the body. They don't like that. Yeah. I was going to say, that's when you get in trouble, yeah. right? Oh, I, was, I mean, I was talking about the spirits. They don't like that, but yeah, I guess management wouldn't either. I mean, you'd have to find out first. I haven't gathered to go and try, but I've asked if people have done that, and they've said that they don't like it when that happens, so. Just personal experience of asking things. Have fun. <laughs> yeah. I'll uh, I'll let you know if I if I find anything. Yeah. So coming right. to your room, uh, it is 
It's on that second floor, so one more flight of stairs, and you see a similar um, floor. Though this one has a kind of this scar crack uh, in the on the wooden floor itself, so you can kind of with the light almost peer down uh, using one eye on the floor below. Uh, there is a caution sign next to it, but going down that long hallway to the left near these. Uh, large windows that have been boarded up and has a curtain covering. Uh, you see room 207. Uh, entering it, it's small. It's a single bedroom uh, with a stained twin bed mattress, no covering upon it, uh, placed on uh, a metal uh, frame. There's a single uh, cupboard uh, wardrobe in the corner uh, with one of its uh, doors slightly parted open. There's a jacket uh, in the uh, open closet. There are no doors uh, set upon it, but just this uh, white painted bar uh, that's keeping uh, this kind of white jacket, uh, almost like a straight jacket um, aloft. Um, the floor itself looks scraped. Uh, the lacquer has been peeled off completely and it's rough uh, underneath you. There is a toilet in the corner. No privacy whatsoever and a sink right by it. Uh, the mirror is splintered and shattered. Cracks running uh, deep within it and moving on past the mirror into the wall itself. There's no light in here either, except for a little bit of the purple from the Hotel Desire neon light kind of pouring in through the window. The curtains themselves are sheer, but there are metal bars uh, on the windows. At least they said they were going to give us a clean blanket. There's no I'm not blanket. holding my breath. <laughs> um, I want to uh, check the material of the um, the covering of the dresser and the curtains, just to see if it feels more cottony or polyester. It's cotton. A lovely, lovely cotton. Almost itchy to the touch. I would say it's very sterile, but it's not. Not. <laughs> I uh, instinctually look for a power outlet and then remember that the power is out, and then I'm like, damn it. <laughs> and I shut my computer down to save battery. <laughs> Yeah. Um, how big are these curtains? Is it like a like a dual curtain? Is it like just one curtain? Yeah, it's it's dual curtain. So it's kind of a it's a pretty large window. Uh, it's almost half the room, though the room is pretty small itself. I just go you put know, my back see. up in a corner. <laughs> this whole place could go up in flames any second. I, was I didn't just need that to say it looks climbable. Oh, you're gonna sleep? You can sleep in this? I'm I'm gonna try my best. I'm probably not going to. I have uh having some problems with some things in my head that I'm revisualizing. So we'll see how good that works out. Molly, did you want the bed? No? Okay. Is anyone Oops. sleeping on the bed? I'm not touching the bed. I don't know what that is. Hide in the cupboard. Hide <laughs> in the cupboard? <laughs> Molly, you seem familiar with this hotel. No, well, not this one, but I was... On that was different. Like this one is different, but only.
only it was different in a different different. are this different. Is Molly being the experienced one? I don't think I'm going to sleep on the bed either. <laughs> it's probably for the best. So you guys yeah. are sleeping on the floor. Seen some Does things. anyone have to use the restroom? No. I'll hold it. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and you can kind of see, like, uh, if you've ever been to any public restroom uh, where there is um, a stall, um, there's usually, like, paint that's been uh, burned off uh, by the repetition of. Uh, kind of pee spray on the wall over years and years uh, without it being cleaned and so you can kind of see the that part around the toilet the the paint has it's kind of unfurling on itself uh and even the cracks itself next to the sink uh they're, they're deep enough that um you can almost see a, a little bit of light peering uh into your room from maybe the room next door Great place they got here. Five stars. It's old. Maybe it's old. What their Yelp reviews you said, say. You said you do things with spirits. I mean, it's easier when there are literally like bodies in front of me and I talk to them. When they actually show up or do some spooky stuff, like earlier at the bar, that's when it becomes a problem. But. Yeah, I, I mean, I could try to see if there's anybody here if you're really curious, but I don't know how much you really want that. That's... Maybe, maybe I, not. I can... Yeah. I don't try to purposely evoke them. They just show up and talk to me because they're like, hey, yeah, I know you see us. What's up? And like, I was scared at first, but like, after a while, it's just like, yeah, you know. And I forget that people don't do that normally, it's been a while. It's fine. I'm fine. Do I see anything, though? <laughs> do, just out of curiosity. Yeah, so this this is very uh, serendipitous because uh, you haven't rolled your bane yet. Um, so roll 2d6 plus soul and we'll see what captures your attention here. Uh... What captures my attention? Um... Uh, well, 2d6. Those are 2d10s. No, those are 2d6. Plus right. soul. Oh wait, oh wait, do you mean two D six plus then the two, my bonus for soul? Yeah. Yeah. Ah, got you. Um then I would get an nine. So no. Yay. Yeah. Yeah. Alright. Well. The cupboard uh closes. <laughs> You saw something uh, with long streaks of blonde hair uh, within the cupboard itself, uh, but everyone sees the cupboard closed. Sometimes things like to play hide and go seek, you know that. It's a fun little game. Uh, partly because when you die, you're usually too ashamed of the life that you lived as small and inconsequential as it is uh, and so seeing life in of itself gazing about you and looking for you there's uh, there's a gap that is shameful for the dead to endure I see that close I'm just like Hey, it's 
okay. I'm used to you. You you okay? And I'm just like looking like I'm talking to like the closed cupboard. <laughs> Seeing if anything happens. I, I, I can't get out. You just closed it on yourself. I, you, I, I can help open it. No, or do he you not want the door. Who is he? He put me in here, and I, I can't really breathe in here. It's hard to. I have asthma. Who is he? Does he have a name? He. He came for Rose, for a Rose. I oh, fuck. Can you open the door? Yep, I can, I can try. And I'm the only one that can hear this, so I'm just going to walk open the cabinet and see if there's anything inside. Yeah, you you start to open it, but like there's like pressure. Uh, it's almost as if something on the other side is holding it closed. Um, but from the other side, whispering, you, you hear, please help me. But every now and then, the decibels, the bass of the voice lowers to an almost masculine voice instead of this feminine voice that you hear from the other side. Hurry up, open it, please. Nope, and I let go. <laughs> as soon as the decibel drops. What is your name? They're not happy. <laughs> There's no answer, but you do hear thumping uh, from the other room. This. What's I look happened? over to Rose. Yeah, and I'm just like, they're gonna not like this a lot. Yeah, you can almost I see think... something almost blocking the light from that little crack every now and then. Just... I think the... Someone's looking for you, and I don't think it's good, and I think it might be someone tied to your sister. Or, or for girlfriend, sorry. I, I don't know, the... but they're looking for you. And the voice, there's a voice, and it was a girl, but then it got lower. And they wanted me to open the cabinet, and the cabinet was pushing against, and I couldn't open it. But every time it pushed against, the decibel of the voice lowered, and I, I don't, I, fuck that. Don't open that cabinet. Um... Yeah. Um. Sorry, gonna... Molly. I, I guess you're not sleeping in there tonight. I'm gonna pull out my laptop and try to see if I get a signal at all. And if I don't, I'm going to try to look through all the research I have to see if there's anything I found related to this hotel specifically. Yeah. All right. You open up your laptop and, you know, the first thing you see is like that black screen and the, the fire light behind you kind of flickering and moving uh, from an unseen wind. Um, but for the briefest of moments, you could swear that there's a... You know, because you kind of see that reflection in that black screen of yourself kind of gazing down at the laptop. 
but there's someone else behind you. And then, you know, the laptop powers up and is filled with light. So go ahead and roll, keep it together. This is a 2d6, isn't it? Yeah, it's a 2d6 this time. I'm, I because literally... Because of that pain. Okay. It's not my fault, remember, it is chat's fault. They wanted it. Screw you, chat. <laughs> <laughs> I got a six. It's not our oh. fault, we just gave them the option. <laughs> So this is um yeah yeah you this, already this build, could play against build. my repressed memories too by the way yeah so you're going to take a minus two stability um as your, your vision blurs as if you were looking past the computer and you can feel two strong hands against either side of your shoulder hot breath against your right ear. How's it going, baby girl? You seem tense. Do I recognize the voice? You've had nightmares about it. What you imagine his voice would sound like. <laughs> Um, I immediately turn around and, like, backpedal from the wall and just stare at the corner, even though I know that I was behind the wall. Yeah. Um, so act under pressure, because as you're kind of shifting a little bit, and you get to go back to D10s, so congrats, uh, as you're shifting a little bit, his hands, it's like pushing against steel. There is an unholy, almost monstrous strength behind it uh, as they're clutching your shoulders. Let's see if you can get out. So that ten. is 2d10 plus your cool. Oh, okay. Got a 10. All right. Here's a complication. You get out. You squeeze your shoulders away from it. But there is a lingering wetness against your cheek. This person who ripped the love of your life apart has placed his lips upon your cheek. She just starts and as screaming, you back, don't fucking touch me. <laughs> yeah, and everyone sees, like, she was just looking at her computer and is now just kind of pressed leaning her back against the wall but Zella there's no one there you are alone in this room except for the individuals you have here I'm like trying to wipe my face off and I'm sure it doesn't go away <laughs> yeah it's it's oh god it's 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 like sticky honey on your fingers you know no matter how much you lick it or wash your hands there's still that feeling that it's right underneath your fingernail you can almost feel it within the pores of your skin where did he go he was there he was here he was here he touched me where did he go please tell me you Wait. saw it uh would i have actually seen any of this Why don't you roll? We'll see. So you get 2d10 that. now, plus your soul. Awesome. So see through illusion? <clears throat> mm-hmm. Or... Wait, what? Wait. Right? Okay, okay. Wait. You, you got an 18, right? I, I thought I heard yeah. 4. No, no, 18. <laughs> That's an 18. Okay. <laughs> oh, hell no. Hell no. <laughs> I'd I'd cry a little. Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> I'm, I am also glad. Um, I think I said soul would sound like four. So. Yeah, yeah. 
like this whole place opens up to you um, like a Venus flytrap uh, you smell uh, blood and honey uh, kind of crawling into your nostrils and you can feel the hair within your nose kind of prickling up and shifting because of the smell there's a lot of things coming at you at the same time the cupboard the right door is open when it happened you don't know there is someone looking at you from the crack into the next room you see a blue eye attached to a face being pressed against that crack from the other side over and over and then something is on Zella it's hard to describe it's this absence of everything on Zella's shoulders. It kind of stretches up to the dark places of the room itself, obscuring itself, but you can see how it weighs upon her. So I can't see that it's the person from my vision from before. I can't tell, but I can tell there's a presence. Mm -hmm. Does it feel familiar and slimy enough to kind of have a hint that it might be that person with the way she's reacting? No, the person who... <sighs> you know what? I know secrets, but I'm just it's... trying to... Roll, roll 2d10 to keep it together. Let's see if you can claw your way into this memory, if you want. Okay, yeah, yeah. No, I'm going. I have nothing to keep together, so... Should be fine. The entire time, Bella's still rubbing her face with her shirt. Yeah, and Bella, okay. like, your shoulders have... They, they are exhausted. Oh. It's kind of the same feeling you get if you wear, like, a... Uh, a new bra or a... Um, uh, or like was were lifting heavy boxes like it's just this very uncomfortable almost itchy feeling around your shoulders and it's hard to tell when it started but it's there and present um, and so okay rain got a 14 this is great this is great you're going back You know that this is not a dream or a vision. You, Rain, were naked on this morgue table with this dead, mutilated corpse on top of you. in an almost sensual and sweet way, despite the gurgling of a scream that seems to be trapped without its head, uh, its long fingernails uh, continue to caress your lips, almost wanting to get in, pushing their way to touch your teeth and your tongue. You can taste the blood underneath the fingernails, a little bit of dirt. Can you say her name? Well, fuck. Uh, take one of your stabilities uh, as you go down a little bit more after seeing this. So is it just knocking down a point? Yeah, and then you would choose like an option like um 
<laughs> you you could feel angry, sad, scared, guilt-ridden. You could become obsessed, distracted. It's kind of up to you. Cool. I, I think I'm gonna be upset. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, kind a of lot's happening angry. here. And Rendis isn't even here anymore. Nope. <laughs> and by the way, the name is the one of Stella's partner, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> nope. Don't like. <laughs> yeah, and Zella, you can hear that same name escaping from Rain's lips. What, why? What, she's, is she here? Is she, is, what's no. happening? No. No, um... Similar... I... Memory, um... No, I, uh... It came back. That thing. I... I... I got more, I think, of what happened, or I don't know if it was actually happening to me, or complicated, but gross. I don't... I don't... I don't know. I... And they're just, like, thinking back to that creepy thing, basically trying to fuck them, and <laughs> just being like, is it me? Or was it the girlfriend? Or was it me? Like, they're literally, their brain is flickering back and forth because they're yeah. just like, I don't know what's going on, but I don't like it. <laughs> and, and I so just, like, we're, reach we're out gonna... for Zella's hand, though. <laughs> yeah. As you reach out your hand, and right before we zoom on over to Rendis and her uh, adventures in the hallway, that door behind you, that cupboard, kind of. Eh, uh, eh, uh, eh, uh, uh. Hide and go seek. And then we shift over to Rendis. How are you doing in the hallway? It's dark. Yeah, um, Rendis just kind of takes out their phone, and I know I said to do night vision, and then I realized that I was an idiot because you can <laughs> just you got go a like flashlight. this. And you can put the flashlight on. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, why would I? Why would I go full horror movie when you literally have a flashlight built into your phone? Um, so yeah, she turns the flashlight on, um, and we'll just start with the the door opposite of the one uh, for their room, and just excellent. Knocking upon the door. Is there anything that you say? Housekeeping. The door opens up. Hi, that was a lie. Not actually housekeeping, but I do have a very important question for you. You, you, before you is an eight foot tall woman uh, wearing uh, these trousers with long straps that go over her shoulder. One of them is off to the side. She is muscular. And her arms seem elongated in an almost freakish way. Um, she's bald, and as she looks at you, you can tell that her that her eyes are like this pale blue. Um, behind her, you see hanging from the chandelier four bodies. Each one with what looks like a charger wrapped around their neck and attached to the chandelier uh, as their bodies are kind of moving about like um, what's that little baby thing that they have you know the is it a oh, parasol or yeah yeah I think it's just a carousel yeah um, it's a 
That was they also a have... lie. Still housekeeping. I see you have everything you need here, so I'm just gonna go ahead and move on to the next room. Yeah, they they have like no arms, no legs. They're just neck, head, torso, and even the torsos. It looks like they have been split open from their lip all the way down to the nether regions, Ooh. almost bloating out pieces of their insides just kind of hanging from their forms. And this woman before you looks down at you as you speak, suddenly feeling very small in front of her. But she doesn't say anything. Well, I see you have everything in order here. Um, as I mentioned, this was housekeeping, just making sure you had everything. Um, if you have any need for Tangelo services, feel free to just call down to the lobby and I will leave you to it. She just stares at you. Gonna just back away very slowly. Yeah. You are you going back to your room or are you continuing your jolly adventure? I feel like also, I need to make a roll. Why don't you bitch. keep it together? Yeah, <laughs> why don't yeah. you keep it together? <laughs> like I forget I like what I freaks out for people. This. Yeah, yeah, I forget what freaks out people. Yeah. Um. Hold on, because I got I apparently closed roll twenty for some strange reason. Um. Yeah. Let's keep it together. Officially scaroused, so here we go. Yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And it's actually lower because it's not including that minus one oh, for my. being on the uneasy already because <laughs> my stability had gone down earlier. So it's actually an eight. Yeah. So take that minus four stability. This is bringing you back. Do you remember when you were playing house? When you thought you could have a family? When you thought that you were a healthy individual who could go through life with some semblance of happiness? That you weren't a person who would fuck up everything that you have? That brief moment. You're, you're back. Dude. That mobile overneath, over that small cooing form in that little room. You hear that recognizable, affectionate voice down the hallway. Mm -mm. Nope. Nope, 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 nope. This isn't here. This isn't real. You are dead. And I left you to die, so you are not here. Just gonna keep backing a little, up. A little figure that you're backing away from in that little, little bed. You hear it start to cry. It echoes in your head reverberating on your eardrums. You can almost feel a wetness in your ears. Ah, god damn it. Ah, god damn it, Molly! Tangelo! Tangelo, it's not supposed to be here! Rindis, why don't you come to bed? You're just having a nightmare. Uh, whose voice was that? It's the one you love. Just down the hallway, you see the door has opened. And a little bit of candlelight coming from it into the hallway. You can see a feminine figure stretched out in between that light, that shadow also in that hallway. You know she's not wearing clothes.
Time is on my side. Yes, it is. Time is on my side. Yes, it is. You're right, Sophie. I'm being silly. I'll come back to bed. Come to bed. You go down the hallway, peer into the bedroom. You can feel grass underneath your feet. And there's this lump underneath the white covers. (sighs) Why don't you come and find me? I never stopped looking. I'm just underneath the covers. Come into the bed, it's cold. She'll step forward, following the coaxing. Yeah, it's cold. I've been doing this for so long, I need to lay down. She'll move and pull the covers back, see what's under. There's nothing there, but you feel your back against that pillow. Moist lips kissing your eyes, left and the right one back and forth and back and forth but we'll leave you right there because you're in a happy place you're going to go back over to everyone in the room so my hand is outstretching still to Zella's that's where we basically left off right yeah um, Zella will take it with one hand, but like still scrubbing her face on the other and like tensing up because of her shoulders and just keeps whispering like he's not there, he's not there, he's not there. He's... Uh, I, yeah, no, he's he's bad news. He's the worst. Uh, n- no. I really I wish I knew why I was seeing these I don't know if he's doing it to fuck with me both of us but fuck him don't don't say that too loud I think Rendis is just across the hall yeah I get, I get a feeling maybe, maybe Rendis would. Actually fuck that person. I've been nearly fucked by that person. I do not recommend it. (laughs) I'm just gonna put it up there. Think he's um, doing okay though? Do we hear him screaming to each other? <laughs> um you hear um you hear Rendis just on the other side of the door saying someone's name again and again. Maybe Sophie, Sophia, Sofa, Sophie. Just over and over. Did... Um, did, did he meet somebody or is he just losing it like we are? I... That... 
Molly heads toward the door. Look out in the hallway. Avoid the, the furnace kicking in. <laughs> and try to save her in this. <laughs> so you're opening the door into the hallway. Yeah. Much as, as she knows, she really shouldn't. <laughs> Is everyone else going to peer out as well? Uh, yeah. Nope. I'm going to, like, look at them peering, but I don't want to, like, fully look. Yeah. I just, I follow behind, I follow behind Molly with the lantern, just for a little bit of light. Brindis. Open the door. <laughs> Ready for anything. Brindis is against the wall on the opposite end. Lifted up by this monstrous huge woman. Her thumb, or better yet, her thumbs, are deep into Rindus's eyes. You see her placing her lips and tongue just below, licking up that dark crimson, which is coming from what's left of his eyeballs that dripping crunching licking and Rendis you're having a wonderful dream with Sophia she is ever so gentle kissing your eyes again and again you can feel how much she loves you. It almost hurts. For those watching, or uh, <laughs> not for those watching, watching, but for those who have seen this scene, uh, why don't you keep it together? Is that me or everybody else? Uh, you've already Hi. went down, so you're fine. You're having a good moment. Uh, but... I'm having a good time, okay. Yeah, That's you're having a, a D6 time. is right. Uh, if you haven't rolled before, because the Bane was only one time. How much would I see if I'm watching them watch? Do I see the lady because she's tall, or...? If you're... No, because, like, the, the space between the bed and the door is pretty small. Uh, so unless you're, like, actively trying to see, if you're just looking at them, looking at the scene... Uh, you're probably further into the room, so you're just seeing, like, your friends and companions looking okay. terrified uh, across. Oh, no. Oh, no. I, oh, no. I might have rolled a little bad. Yeah. <laughs> For Crowley and Molly. There is something peculiar about this scene, as you're each going to take minus four stability. Okay. What's grotesque about this scene is not the licking and crunching as this large woman's teeth bite down against Rendis's sheep. nor the fingers which continue to for no better word face fuck Rendis in the eyes 
the most awful thing about this scene is that Rendis is aroused. And as you feel the shift, the wind kind of breathing into this hotel, kind of that last breath before something truly wonderful and beautiful happens. We'll end it there. So, good job, everyone. <laughs> Woo! Wow. It's fine. Don't even worry about it's it, It's all good. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> Thank you, oh, everyone. God, I love you so much, us. bitch. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> One more hour. One more hour. I mean, no, I, we are coming up upon time. <laughs> So, oh my god, I want to continue doing this, uh, so we should definitely figure out a time where we can all do whatever comes next, because a lot's gonna happen. But, tonight wouldn't have been as amazing and beautiful and wonderful without these amazing people. Uh, so before I sign off myself, uh, we are gonna go around, they're gonna tell you about themselves, why you should follow them, and goddammit, you should follow them, because they are amazing cast members. Uh, starting with uh, older to no one playing Zella Rose. Hi, um, I'm Nikki, the creator of Beholder to No One, a TTRPG podcast with discussions, one shots, and actual plays. I also have two new shows coming out in um, in 2022: Dice Before Dawn for a Vampire the Masquerade game called Phoenix by Night, and Sound Control RPG for a Savage World sci-fi game called Radio Signal. I'm also the DM starting on January 21st, 2022 for Awfully Queer Heroes for Tower of Souls, where Chaos is trying to take down the Order. And I'm also starting Season 2 on January 7th of Weird Web on 2000 Tales, uh, where I play Karen, a ghost-turned-demon, now-turning-slowly-human-undead person, and it's very confusing. But it's a lot of fun. <laughs> and you can find me on Twitter Make at the sure. Yeah, make sure to, to follow them, uh, amazing person. Uh, follow them on Twitter. If you came via the Twitter announcement, you should see all these people's names mentioned on there. Um, so, moving on down to Chaos Them playing the wonderful Rain. Always Did I flirt enough contest. with you? Yeah, yeah, you flirted. Okay, you, good, good. Yeah. You're, I'm not crying, so you're good. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, I tried to flirt with you in in different ways between the oh. and that. Oh, it's yeah, fine. It's just like, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Show notes being, I told Mitch, if you don't flirt with me, I'll cry. So you know, <laughs> I was I was joking, but you know, um, it's it's a game with Mitch, and we have a shtick at this point. So anyway, <laughs> hi, I'm Elliot, um, also known as Chaos Them on. All of the socials, for the most part, um, that's where my announcements for when I'm going to be on streams is. It's kind of infrequent, but hopefully more happens in 2022. And I also stream on Twitch at Chaos Them. I want to start more in the new year. I've been getting into playing live music lately, and people seem to like that. So I want to do a little bit more of that. I typically stream video games. Otherwise, if I'm not on my channel, I am on so many different ones. I'm on Gehenna Gaming, I'm on Carry on Comfort, I'm on here, I'm on the Transverse. I'm all over the place. Um, so yeah, just keep your eyes out and if you want to see my personal ramblings and screamings of the world, Chaos Elliot is where you can also find me on Twitter. Um, that's my main shitpost account, but if you want just the good stuff of everything organized, Chaos Bum is where I am at. But yeah, awesome, um, awesome. next week also, I believe, is when we are starting the Hades Town TTRPG on Carry and Comfort. I don't believe they've announced that yet, but I'll just do a little sneak peek. I'm gonna be uh, playing the equivalent of Orpheus, uh, the, the, you know, one in love. I'm pretty good at doing that in tabletop games, so I'm excited. Yes. 
<laughs> awesome, awesome. All right, uh, swooping on over uh, to the myth, the legend, Party White Games playing Brindis. Uh, this is actually their um, returning character from a campaign of cult that we did uh, a couple of seasons ago called uh, I Am Pilgrim. So if you're interested in stuff like this, definitely check out that campaign because that was a lot. Uh, we had a lot of people come in and do some extra stuff. But uh, Party White Games, what you got? Yeah, uh, we still needed to do a sequel for that too. By the way, Mitch, uh, we yeah, haven't talked yeah. about it. It never, it hasn't gone anywhere yet. I'm not going to let you forget. Um, hi, Please I'm Rindis. I was playing Rindis. Um, she is significantly worse off than where she started from uh, the start of I Am Pilgrim, uh, but no less horny. So you know, there you go. Um, next time. Yeah, next time you can catch me. Thank you for all the sound effects, by the way, Ian, on point today. Um, next time you can catch me is tomorrow on our own channel, Party Wipe Games, uh, where my wonderful girlfriend is running uh, Wilds Beyond the Witchlight, where I play a bunk who constantly gets their ass beat, and I spend most of the time tanking the floor instead of the monsters because she doesn't hold her punches. Um, other than that... Um, we have a couple of games on hiatus that will be starting back up at the new year, including uh, a wonderful Vampire the Masquerade game that I'm dying to get back into playing because Cadence is there too, and it's always a good time. Also, Dido, are we playing Saturday? We have a 5th uh, edition game on Saturday too. I don't know if we're playing I am not playing not. Saturday. I will be driving. You're not here Saturday. So then probably not. But anyways, uh, we have a whole bunch of stuff that we do most of the days of the week, but a lot of them are on hold. So it's just kind of a toss up if you'll see us or not. Boom. All right. Um, so next on our list, we have Magdalene Bloom uh, playing Molly O'Brien, uh, a terrifying character, once again from the I Am Pilgrim campaign. So it was really cool uh, seeing that character again and diving into uh, this shit world uh, uh, again. So, uh, Magdalene, what you got? And if you remember, that campaign was the first streamed game I ever did as well. So, yeah. Oh, man. That was, that was the best. <laughs> I've seen some things. Um, yeah, I can be found at Magdalene Bloom on the Twitter. I just ran. Um, um, yeah. well, the vampire game gets going with party wipe games. Maybe that going on. Maybe I'm going to the midwinter, midwinter, midwinter gaming convention in Milwaukee in two weeks. Uh, we'll oh, see. Man. Yeah. <laughs> and I hope so, because there's a lot of vampire going to be happening now. <laughs> Other than that, that's me. All right. Always good to see you. Uh, and finally, our special guest who popped in uh, just at the right time, uh, Daitox. <laughs> If I if I'm saying Dito. that right, it was no Daito eleven. Yeah, I'm like, is are, are those L's or I's uh, playing the? They're amazing, they're they're uh, ones. Uh, yeah, I was totally wrong. <laughs> uh, but let me tell people, uh, they have, uh, she has this horrific backstory that I'm trying to weave into this that is, that is just going to add more fuel to the flame. So uh, we're, we're going to if, thank you. If Ian, you would like, it. <laughs> <laughs> if you would like to know a little ahead. bit more about her backstory, she is a character I played last season. Was it last season or the season before? It was last um, season. Yeah, it, it was the cult game that I, played... I got to run on Weave. Yes, that is that is where I took her from because this was very last minute. Um, I got a message from Ian about 20 minutes before I was supposed to go into a meeting. He was like, I'm going to be late. But um, yeah, so I'm Dido. Uh, I play here on Weave and uh, Swindler's Den where we do a lot of D&D 5e, and uh, I play with Ren on Party White, Thursdays and Saturdays. Uh, Thursdays I keep him alive. When my character showed up, the whole party was unconscious. <laughs> um, and then in the Saturday game, Ren and I are married. 
Well, they're getting married. Our characters. Our characters are getting married. Our characters are engaged. Uh, I need to push more romance between the players in this one. Uh, we have this uh, Romeo and Juliet thing going on. Uh, our families are our enemies and have been for many, many centuries. Um, yeah, you can catch anything else that I do uh, at Dido11 over on Twitter. Awesome, awesome. Well, uh, my last announcement is definitely uh, a huge uh, shout out to uh olivia Steele, who this so this uh this game was inspired by the video game lust from beyond which is on steam right now and olivia Steele, who is in the chat right now uh is the voice actress for amanda uh like the one of the main characters in that that video game so uh thank you for showing up uh for enjoying this with us and hopefully sometime later uh, we will have her reprise her character in the video game uh, and, and, and hang out with you guys. Uh, <laughs> so it, it'll be amazing. I, I was just so happy to be able to, uh, to have her here and, and to see her reactions in chat. And honestly, to just have such an amazing time with everyone here. Uh, I love how uh, we checked in with each other uh we we were we were talking in the background just to make sure everything like our our reactions and stuff so uh I, I love when we can enjoy scary stuff but in a comfortable and safe environment um so yeah thank you for coming to weave the tale uh our next season is coming up pretty soon uh probably around mid-january we're going to announce some amazing things that are coming up uh i am uh mitch also known as mitch s uh i am the co-owner of penny for a tale network which has Weave the Tale, as well as uh, we've written uh, Necrobiotic, which is on Kickstarter. The Backer Kit is closing soon, but God, it looks beautiful. It's going to be an amazing book. Uh, and then Chew, the role-playing game, is I'm the lead writer for that. And so the Backer Kit is also live for that. Um, other than that, you'll find me at conventions such as Gen Con, Origins, and Packs Unplugged, selling these amazing products and chatting with people about the TTRPG industry. Uh, thank you guys so much for being a part of this. We will see you guys pretty soon. And trust me, whatever is in your cupboard wants to get out. And on that beautiful, wonderful, and imaginative note, uh, we will say our adieus and uh, wave to you guys goodbye.